Hello. Good afternoon. I'm Valeria Gordon. I am the regional director of the South Atlantic region of the network. My colleague, Dr. Joseph Riley. Joe, where are you? Right there. Uh, him and I, we're hosting this um, uh, event today, and as it is held in the South Atlantic region of the network. On behalf of the National Dental Practice Based Research Network, I would like to welcome all of you to the Network Symposium Workshop at the AADR. It has been an honor to plan this program. I have had the outstanding support of the AADR and NIDCR, the funding agency supporting the National Network. We have planned a very interactive, dynamic, and engaging uh, meeting. So for the next, the next two and a half hours, we will have multiple presentations, roundtable discussions, and a panel discussion. And we were originally assigned 120 seats uh, for this symposium. And we were pleasantly surprised uh, with a larger room to accommodate more than 200 um, registrants that we have had. So it's a very, very good. Thank you so much for being here. We also have quite a diverse group of stakeholders with representation from all the six regions of the national network. Among our participants, we have researchers, dentists, academicians, physicians, nurses, hygienists, patients, NIH staff, students, deans, associate deans, research coordinators, industry, dental insurance, VA medical center, clinicians from large group practice and solo practice, as well as public health and federal qualified health center. And we also have the participation of international dentists and researchers, as well as the America Dental Association representatives. So it's quite a unique group. And this does not happen by chance. Uh, we definitely appreciate your support of this very topic, very important topic that we'll be discussing today. In celebration of NIDCR launching of the 2030 goals, we had chose the theme of today's discussion, advancing research to integrate medical and dental care. So this is the slide for Joe and I, and that's the South Atlantic region showing uh, the states that we're responsible for, so Florida clearly among them, and um, this is topic, and I would like to invite now Dr. Uh, Marta Sonomer, our first speaker. She's the director of the National Institutes of Dental and Craniofacial Research, NIDCR, National Institutes of Health, and chief of the Laboratory of Oral Connective Tissue Biology at the National Institutes of Arthritis and Musculoskeletal and Skin Diseases. The NIDCR mission is to improve the dental, oral, and craniofacial health through research, research training, and dissemination of health information. Please welcome Dr. Marta Summerman. Okay. No, I'll, I'll just talk with you. But wow, it's it's so it's so amazing to see. I've, been here almost every year that they've started to launch this and to see so many people in the room, it's, it's pretty incredible. So thank you all for joining. As, as I said, I'm the proud director of um, NIDCR and I get to talk, but it's really the staff that do everything. So um, NIDCR people, just I'm not gonna introduce you, but just stand up for the support. So Dr. Doug Sheely, deputy director and all the wonderful staff over here. So. This is, this is the group that really works and puts everything together, yeah. So thank you so much for all that you do. And so um, I'm delighted to be the uh, first speaker here, and I think I, I see all these people I want to thank for everything you do, Greg. And, um, but I'm going to be talking about um, NIDCR 2030 in the theme of integrating uh, medicine and dentistry, but really starting out from here. And so... This is something that I've recognized for years in the different parts of my career. I think starting out as an assistant professor, uh, I was really focused on all it is is it's about basic science. And I really myself didn't see this wheel that goes around and we really need to integrate. So first we need to integrate us as dental oral craniofacial professionals. Before we move into medicine and integrate with medicine, we need to get our act together but also 
then we need to integrate with medicine. So what I have seen and um, is this really not this fluid, seamless flow. But could you imagine if we really had something like this? We could really work together. And I think in a room like this, we have many different players and there are huge opportuni opportunities for us to work in the communication between the basic scientist, the clinician, translational research, and the practicing uh, professionals. In addition to that, we have this huge data sharing, and we were just talking about this, of the lack of it frequently. And then, of course, the patients in the communities that we serve. And so I, I showed this, and I showed this recently, so some of you have already seen this, but I really just love this, and I call this the pizza moment. And so the reason why this is the pizza moment is just like today, you finally got your food before we start talking. So the students were sitting out in the back. I was a dean at the University of Washington at the time. The students were waiting because the pizza hadn't arrived. And the wonderful dentist that was volunteering to give a luncheon talk was uh, talking with, was pull, pulled me in. He saw me talking to this. He said, come here, I have this puzzling case and I don't know what to do about it. And he had followed this young, excellent dentist, followed this young man along from when he got hit by a baseball bat when he was seven years old, fractured his jaw, fractured the tooth. And you can see that there. I hope you can see it in the back. It's a fractured tooth. Um, you may think, better get that out. Even though it's asymptomatic right now, it's going to be a pain. Let's get it out while we're wiring the jaw. And he said, asymptomatic. I'm just going to do nothing right now because this kid has a lot more. And well, he's follow he followed the case, and you can see what happened. It healed. Well, we know cracked teeth don't heal, right? Anyone not know that? So how this happened? And so he, and so he showed me this right here. And so the permanent tooth is coming in, and you have fluid bathing the area, like a broken bone. Broken bones heal. That's probably what was going on. Because of my observing this, I ended up putting a grant together that was funded by NIDCR on what is the fluid bathed in that area. He ended up writing a chapter, so a, a dentist that got excited about the research was already excited, but didn't know where, who to talk to, didn't know who to go to. And so we need to challenge that interaction with each other so that things like this expand our research, that expand the quality of care for the patients, which it's all about. So there's a disconnect. And there's a disconnect in medicine as well. So this was just published in, um, I think, the January issue of um, New England Journal of Medicine. And it was discussing uh, the uh, dental st uh, medical students and, in fact, the concern that they're becoming so specialized and so narrow that they're not asking about the patient and scientific inquiry. Instead, they're just filling out check boxes. And so the same concern is in medicine and dentistry and then trying to integrate us together. So it's not that simple a solution. So along those lines, though, there are many, many different areas of research that we um, in, in, at NIDCR fund and I just wanted to go through that for a second so you can look at the at least eight diseases that we really focus on. And yes, we do a large part of our portfolio carries periodontal disease, cancer. But there are also other areas, including um, oral systemic complications, oral facial pain is a large area of our portfolio. And rare diseases is about 10% of our portfolio. With all these different things we're doing, it needs a team approach. And so there are many, many different areas from tissue engineering to microbiology, immunology, practice-based research is on there. There are many, many different things. And then there are areas across the spectrum that need um, training. So we need a strong workforce. We need a diverse workforce, tools and technologies. Any of you, those of you in practice, um, Small business, if you have some ideas, we fund small business projects and are excited about that. The data sciences and the omics uh, and also uh, dealing with overcoming health disparities. And with that, not only um, do we fund uh, the research aspect, we uh, uh, fund about 
85, 90% of the training and faculty development uh, is funded by NIDCR versus the other institutes to dental schools. And we're also a, a workforce engine uh, for the community. So there are about 6,500 researchers in our field uh, supporting the dentists in the community. So talking about NIDCR 2030 and how did it happen. So uh, the executive staff, my key leadership and I have um, these retreats and we discuss things. And we were realizing that we were halfway through our strategic plan. It's hard to believe that I was involved in this strategic plan that we're now on, 2014 to 2019. And we're halfway through it at one of our retreats. And I said, you know, we need to start thinking about the next, next uh, strategic plan. It was like, oh, no. But then we realized, or I realized, and very supported by the staff, that this time around, our strategic plan is solid. It remains. We're very uh, motivated with the existing strategic plan. But we need to be bold. We need to be innovative. We need to think way outside the box. And with that, um, somebody said, NIDCR 2030. And then uh, Dr. Lillian Shum said, yeah, it's only three R01s away, and now it's about two R01s away, so it's really not that far away to move there. And at the same time we were discussing that, this article came out in Science. It was a small little snippet. And it was this man in a shower, and you can imagine, I think this is going to happen. So he has all these sensors, and by the time he walks out of the shower, he's been screened for the day. And he will maybe say, oh, I'm vitamin D, uh, B12 deficient, pops a pill, ready to go to work. And yet all these senses were all over the body, and none were focused on the dental or craniofacial region. Let's wake up call again that we're out of, we're out of the box. We're not considered part of the mainstream. The head is yet to be connected to the body. And so how do we get to 2030? And while it may be obvious to the outside community, I think to all of you here, we keep saying dental or craniofacial health and disease need to be understood in the context of the whole body. And yet, it's not there yet. And if we can get there by 2030, I'll feel really good about it. So it's all hands on board. Everybody here, I think part of the practice-based research network is really focused in that direction of total health and of communicating with um, the basic science, with the clinical translational research, and also with other healthcare professionals. So with that, we developed five different areas of focus. And then we went out using, so it's oral health, overall health, precision health, autotherapies, oral bio devices, and workforce diversity. These were our five theme areas. And then we went, I forget if I have it on the next, um, no. So then we went out and used an idea scale. The American Dental Association, um, the American Association of Dental Research really helped us with this and launched this last year at the AADR meeting, AADR-IDR meeting. And if you haven't used the idea scale, those of you in academia, it really is a very wonderful way of engaging the communities and getting their feedback. And so we reviewed their feedback. And based on their feedback um, in these five areas, we've been discussing and we're going in the implementation stage of deciding which directions to go. We're going to be using the idea scale as we decide these directions. So please go online, take a look at it. Get, we need your input. We got advocacy groups. We have industry involved. We have communities involved. And of course, our, our practitioners and the academicians. So please uh, be involved. So some of the things in terms of precision medicine and the practice-based research network that have really helped us along um, was one of the first things that I looked at when I came to um, NIDCR and began to really appreciate the practice-based research network, although the University of Wa Washington was one of the first hubs when I was the dean there, was the osteonecrosis of the jaw. And I don't know if you recall, way back um, in this area, the pharmaceuticals were com companies were saying, no, it's not related to the bisphosphonates. It's really related to the fact that they're taking all these medications. 
and through the practice-based research network doing retrospective studies, you were able to demonstrate for us, for the pharmaceutical companies, that in fact, while it's a small percent and the bisphosphonates are still really great medications, that there is an issue here with osteonecrosis of the jaw. With that, we then, and I, I think, um, so this is NRDCR-funded topics related to osteonecrosis of the jaw because with the understanding that the bisphosphonates were really a concern, recognizing there are other drugs, many of the drugs that affect the osteoclasts relate to osteonecrosis of the jaw. The oral cavity is incredibly sensitive to phosphate and phosphate metabolism. We then started asking questions at the basic science level. So that's a perfect example of closing the loop of going from the clinical to the basic to the clinical to the basic. And without going into the um, details of this, you can see that um, we've been funding a lot of basic research in this area. And if you just go down to the bottom, we're now pulling out some specific genes that are related to alterations with specific medications that um, affect the osteoclast. And I think many of you also know that um, increased susceptibility to osteonecrosis uh, with these regulators of osteoclasts if you have infection. So physicians should be referring patients to the periodontist, to the general dentist, before they go ahead and use these treatments. That was a guideline, and I don't think that guideline is totally embraced. And so we, there's another example of a disconnect where every time they're, they're um, suggesting a bisphosphonate or any of these other medications, they really need to go back and communicate with us, and that's not happening. Um, as, as frequently as it should. So that's another area of integration between the two communities. The next two slides I find an interesting example of one where we're beginning to understand common mechanisms in different diseases, and in another one where actually it's a different trigger factor that turns on the same factor. So we've, we've often thought of with rheumatoid arthritis, I Many articles have suggested that there's an association between rheumatoid arthritis and periodontal disease. What I'm think, beginning to realize is one doesn't cause the other, but in fact, they're frequently common mechanisms that cause um, these inflammatory flare-ups. So in this particular situation, they found that 50% that of the um, individuals that have RA also have um, an associated actinomycetes comitans, one of my favorite bacteria that um, causes an aggressive type of periodontal disease. And they find high levels of AA in um, individuals with rheumatoid arthritis. As you know, the AA secretes toxins. These toxins affect the neutrophils, which then stimulate these um, autoantibodies that cause the inflammatory process. And so a common pathway for RA and periodontal disease. Interestingly enough, another article that was uh, recently published, um, featured in the journal Dental Research, related to um, a common factor, so these Th17 helper cells, that causes a severe destructive reaction, both in the skin and also in the gingiva, but in the skin, it's related to the microbiome that stimulates this a a activity, where in the oral cavity, it's related to the stresses and strains. So, Different mechanism, end result the same. And then, of course, I think many of you are, have recognized this. We recognized this with H. pylori a long time ago in terms of specific bacteria um, having an effect on, ca on uh, cancer and cancer induction. This is a very interesting one. F. nucleatium, I think you've, many of you have read, has become a featured uh, bacteria in causing a lot of diseases. And in this particular case, they found 50% of those individuals with colorectal tumors um, had uh, F. nucleatum, and it seems to travel with the metastasis. And in a mouse model, when they used an anti antibiotic that targeted F. nucleatum, they prevented the growth of the tumor. If they used an antibiotic that did not affect F. nucleatum, it had no effect on the tumor growth. 
So this is a uh, suggesting mechanisms of action and specific bacteria, bacteria that we've often thought we know are associated with the oral cavity, but may be associated with, uh, obviously associated with other um, tissues in the body as well. One of the areas that I'm incredibly excited about, and by the way, I don't call out individuals in their own research area because it's all the wonderful researchers we have in the extramural community that, and our intramural researchers as well that are doing all this great research. And so I hesitate to mention one versus another, but if you want the individual articles related to this, I'd be happy to supply them. So one of the areas that I'm very excited about is probiotics, that finally, rather than, um, so this is, relates to precision uh, health, because rather than you go to the health food store, and I have wonderful scientists that forget they're scientists and go to the health food store and pick up the stuff. And um, now we have an opportunity, I think, with the tools and technologies to be able to advance probiotics that it really has an evidence base, an evidence base for our patients. This is a specific example where a specific strain of streptococcus was able to alter the effects of strep mutans. Interestingly enough, this bacteria that was anti-caries bacteria was identified in a healthy individual. So this is an example of wellness in forming disease processes. So very much um, precision health type orientation. And also, um, we're doing studies related to disruption of the biofilm, and so you disrupt the biofilm, then you use the probiotics. So it's not that simple, but I really do feel that the work that we're doing and our researchers uh, will advance this field to be an evidence-based um, and selective to those at risk. So with the practice-based networks, I, I know we're going to be reviewing the details of that, so I'm not going to review all the wonderful stuff, but um, the practice-based net network um, is engaging practitioners to generate evidence, the evidence to improve precision healthcare. It's been supported since 2005, and as you know, there are currently two new funding opportunities for infrastructure support. Um, uh, and I think these projects are due by July 17, 2018. We're very excited about funding the next phase of this. Um, every time we do something um, additive to or synergistic to the last uh, version of it, so it's going to be a little bit different, but we're very excited about um, working with you and the communities on the next version of this. And topics that I felt uh, specifically uh, related to the precision health and, health and integrating oral, oral and overall health, including temporal mandibular joint disorders, an area that we need um, research at the basic science and also translational and clinical level. Opioid prescribing, big issue right now. ADA is involved in that and coming to visit us um, this coming week related to uh, the, their um, interest in the opioids. And they have really advanced dentistry. I think the dentists are way ahead in terms of decreasing prescriptions, and we need to do a better job, though, but it, they're working on that. HPV screening in the dental office, the feasibility of it, and also multi-risk assessment in dental care settings, and I think you're going to be hearing more about that as well. So thank you uh, very much uh, from the NIDCR. It's all about discovery. It's an integration, integration of us together as a community and integration with other health professionals and also collaboration and partners. Without all of you in the room today, we wouldn't be who we are. So thank you very much. And um, I think we do panel later, so thank you.